In 2010, the world was shocked by the biggest indie release we'd ever seen. Okay, maybe not all that, but seriously, 2010, when Super Meat Boy was released, it let a lot of people know that small indie developers could make really huge impactful games, to the point where I think this was one of the first indie games that we really saw blow up and get as much attention as a lot of AAA titles. Many people were playing this game, it was huge everywhere. Now jump ahead 13 years and we really haven't seen much out of this uh, development team. We've gotten an auto runner and that's really about it. That is until just a few days ago ago when Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine was released. Now this game is a Puyo Puyo style type game where you have to match colors to create chains, create combos, eventually destroy items. We understand how the Puyo Puyo style works, right? It's a tried and true but simple formula that is really easy to understand. And in this game, we are met with a very young doctor, very, very young doctor, who is uh, tired of trying to beat Super Meat Boy. And what do they say? If you can't beat him, join him? Well, that's kind of what he's trying to do. Well, he's trying to create his own. He wants to make a clone of Super Meat Boy. The problem is, the DNA that he obtained is imperfect. And thus, most of his creations are then imperfect. So he puts them through a literal meat grinder to try to find the best genetic code he can. So as this game begins, it's very simplistic. You just match colors up, put your pieces into place, gain a lot of combos and chains and all of that fun stuff that we like playing in these games. Then this game takes a turn. You see, then they decide well, we're gonna put in saw blades that are spinning quite quickly and moving across the screen. And at some point we're gonna add in rockets and not only that, ghosts as well. Because we really got to figure out the best genetic code to make Super Super Meat Boy. And as I was playing this, I realized just how respectful responsive the controls are, how buttery smooth the entire game performed and felt. But it had to be, because if it wasn't, this game would be an automatic failure. It's, like many would understand, a lot like Super Meat Boy in the fact that it is difficult, it is brutal, it is punishing at times, and it does give you a little bit of mercy in the fact that when you do hit one of these saw blades or ghosts or rockets or whatever, you are at least reset back to a checkpoint instead of having to restart the entire level. But but the fact is, if you haven't reached that checkpoint yet, then you have to restart the entire level. You do get to these checkpoints by causing an explosion. And when you've done enough of your matching, you will, uh, you'll, you'll see this circuit burst on the side, and that lets you know that you're now at a checkpoint. And usually at this point, that'll cause some other crazy thing to happen that will be even more maniacal than the last thing, like the saw blade will speed up, and it will start to move in a less predictable manner. Things like that will happen, and from there you just build onto it, try to create another blown circuit and keep going to get to the next level. But it was in this point too that I found myself thinking, was this really the best choice for a new Super Meat Boy game or even a spin-off? And like I said before, we've only got like an auto runner. That was the last game we've got since Super Meat Boy itself. And now they come with a spin-off where I'm thinking it doesn't really have a huge target audience. There's not going to be a lot of people who are going to be really into this. You see, most of the people who are into these type of games typically are ones who are either already into uh, the competitions and like Puyo Puyo and some of those other games or people like well your mom your grandma who might enjoy just playing free mobile games or games on Facebook but that's not this if your mom tried to play this aside from the aesthetics the um, first visualization that you have when you hear the name of the game and you know the blood and everything else aside from all that she'll rip her hair out because it is incredibly punishing so is this game really only for or like some very hardcore base and I could understand maybe a little bit of frustration amongst the Super Meat Boy fan base as they want this IP to eventually get a true successor and they want this IP to be profitable so that somebody will actually invest the money and the time and the effort to actually make that successor. And the question remains, will Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine be a game that expands that IP? I thought about this as I was playing the game and then I realized I've been playing this game a lot. And I'm a gamer who does not like, honestly, I don't like the Puyo Puyo style games. 
I like the idea of Super Meat Boy, but the many times I've tried to play it, I have been incredibly unsuccessful. But here I am playing this IP for a lot longer than I've played a Puyo Puyo game or Super Meat Boy. And so this entire time as I'm playing, and I've been thinking, oh, they're sort of ostracizing the Super Meat Boy fans, and they're not really giving the Puyo Puyo fans what they would want, that accessibility, that almost relaxed feeling when you're playing those games. I realized that actually they were maybe combining the two and creating yet a different audience that might appreciate it. A gamer like myself, who probably is not going to be able to play Super Meat Boy, but is able to at least get pretty far in this game and enjoy it, even when it is incredibly brutal, but it's not as punishing as some might think, or even as Super Meat Boy. And that's where I think it was incredibly intelligent of them to actually release a demo, because there's going to be a lot of people like me who, I'm going to look at the game and go, nah, I don't think so. I'm not going to spend $10 on this game, because I'm probably just not going to be into it. But if there's a demo, yeah, I'll check it out. And through playing, I'll learn, oh, this is a game for me. I actually enjoy this game. And that's where this game really did catch me by surprise. You see, there are some of these puzzle type games that I enjoy. Pokemon Puzzle League was a game I enjoyed, as well as that Puzzle Fighter, the Street Fighter game. I really enjoyed that one as well. But most of them, eh, they just don't do it for me. And this one, I actually found quite a bit there for me to enjoy. So is this a game that's gonna get like a 10 out of 10 or something like that? No, it's not. But it does score a lot higher for me than I thought it would. And to be honest, this is one of those situations where I'm a big fan of Thunderful. And they hooked me up with the review code. And I hate being honest, but I have to be when it comes to reviewing games. And I know what you're thinking. Well, then why did you even apply for it if you didn't think you would like it? Well, because I need to keep doing this channel. And I have to keep making content. Or, you know, YouTube's gonna take my kids. Which at this point I'm okay with, to be honest. So, YouTube overlords, come on, get rid of them. They're taking up too much of my time time anyway. Though, no seriously, I really wanted to give it a shot. And I wanted to give it an outsider's perspective and not somebody who is attached to the, the series or somebody who's a big fan of puzzlers just to see if like there is something there. And I was really surprised when, yes, I found out there is something there. But it was definitely something I had to find on my own as I was playing the game. And that's why I recommend anyone to actually just play the demo first and see if it's your type of game. You know, see if it does mesh well with you. You might not like any of the stuff. You might only really like first person shooters or whatever. Well then, you know, that's cool. I appreciate you checking out my review, but yeah, this is not for you. But if you're a gamer who enjoys a lot of different games, then yeah, I would definitely say, if nothing else, just check out the demo. So when I think about everything that went into this game. You got the graphics, the sound, the controls, the playability, the replayability, the story mode, everything. And I also think obviously about that price tag being $10. I have to say that overall I would give this game a 6.5 out of 10. Very very close to the 7. Closer to the 7 than to just regular 6. So 6.5 seems like a pretty fair score for me. And this is one that I would probably recommend to a lot of people to check out. It is going to be difficult, but one of the best things about the game is the fact that when you do die and you respond, it is incredibly quick. It's like you barely miss a beat and you're already back at that challenge again. And I appreciate when games do that, because it just feels like you're not wasting as much time, even though you know you're wasting a lot of time dying. But anyway, that's my thoughts on Dr. Fetus's Mean Meat Machine. Let me know in that comment section below if you guys plan on picking this up, if you're a fan of Super Meat Boy, if you're a fan of like those really difficult platformers, anything and everything, let me know what you're going to pick up. And I have to say that if I do sound a little low energy, I do apologize. I'm having to record this at the dead of night because of a lot of crap. <laughs> just a lot of crap. I can just throw Throw that in. A lot of crap. Anyway, though, guys, I love each and every one of you. You guys are truly amazing, and you make my day, so I appreciate y'all. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.